Four-year-old Charlotte Holmgren has a bedroom view that nearly everyone in Little Silver, New Jersey is talking about. Do you know what that is? Tower. This cell tower is just 120 feet from her home. I'm scared to death that she's going to wake up with cancer or reproductive issues. Charlotte's mother, Alicia Holmgren, says the 95-foot structure was built within a week in May, smack in the middle of town with seemingly no warning to residents. Homeowners in one Long Island town are preparing for a fight. Two dozen cell phone repeaters installed in front of their homes. It was done legally, but residents say they were never told that it was happening. CBS 2's Carolyn Gussoff reports now from Woodbury. The view from Denise Tufano's Woodbury home abruptly changed last month, towering on her front lawn a cell phone repeater. I could not believe this was actually happening. I said, how could the town permit this? How could they do this to us? She and Woodbury neighbors fuming over the placement of 22 cell repeaters for Verizon in front of homes on what's technically public property without notice or compensation. You couldn't give me $10 million for this, okay? Uh, there are potential health risks to these. Uh, they are aesthetically not pleasing. There's also the devaluation of our home properties. 5G technology promises faster service, but the jury is out on constant exposure to its radio frequency radiation. G technology promises faster service, but the jury is out on constant exposure to its radio frequency radiation. Your cell phone you use, you put down. Microwave you use, you stop. This is constant bombardment, and we don't know what uh, is the long term. is the long-term effects. Residents say their cell service was good enough. Put them in a commercial area. We don't need it. And you know what? We should have at least been asked. I don't think the health of my children is as important as my cell phone service. When CBS2 asked the town of Oyster Bay supervisor why here, he showed up at this protest and was peppered with residents' demands. They have no place in front of homes in residential neighborhoods. Now, what about you, the ones that are already up? The ones that are Excuse me. New to the post, Joseph Saladino says the town's hands are tied by federal rules that cut local governments out. Town Supervisor Saladino vows to do everything in his power to get these taken down and prevent new ones from going up in front of homes in his power. The operative words in Woodbury, Long Island, Carolyn Gussoff, CBS 2 News. Verizon tells CBS 2 to keep up with the explosive growth. They need the antennas closer to where people are trying to connect so that they will get better coverage. They claim that the small cells have exposure levels similar to baby monitors and microwave ovens. California City is fighting back at a proposed law that is moving quickly through the legislature. They say it would allow phone companies to put up new antennas in your neighborhood, whether you like it or not. KPX 5's Phil Mateer in Walnut Creek. And Phil, today you heard some of the opposition in Sacramento, right? That's right. And a lot of it is based on what you see around us here in Walnut Creek. You're walking down the street in the downtown of your little town, and you maybe one day will look up at a street lamp like this and Sitting on top of it is something totally unexpected, a cell phone antenna. Here's the story. 5G wireless has the potential to be a game changer. But to pave the way for that game change, telecom companies need to put up between 30,000 and 50,000 of these small cell antennas, including several likely in your town over the next five years, but with only limited local say. Local neighborhoods would be seeing something the size of a refrigerator showing up on a street pole, and they could say nothing to stop it. A library, a school. On traffic signals, on light poles. This would give the companies free reign to install these small cells 
on any public infrastructure, and we would have no ability to say no. We're also talking about an industry that is a big player in California politics. In the 2016 election cycle, telecommunication companies contribute over $3 million to both California Democrats and Republicans that are now deciding on this bill, which, by the way, shot through committee on a 6-1 vote with two abstentions. It's going to be a tug of war, but it looks like they're going to win, so it's only a matter of time when we're going to be seeing these. By the way, you'll be able to check it all out on the Internet because they're going to make that faster as well. In Walnut Creek, Phil Mateer, KPIX 5. Back to you guys. Hi, this is John in Los Angeles. It's uh, October 22nd, 2017, about 10 o'clock in the morning, and I'm at a park in Dominguez, California here. That was a little religious ceremony they got going down there. So I'm looking around the park, and I'm looking at this. Look at this. This is a microwave cell tower, guys, right out in the open where anybody can walk up to it. The people are being hit by it that are playing in the park and all this stuff. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the signs here, wide open. Look at this. You can freeze frame the video if you wanna read some of this. I won't stay on it too long, but uh, just take a look at this. Look at this. Yeah, you really wanna salute this. They're microwaving the piss out of us all and they're disguising it as this. This is what they do. They put the flag on things so you trust it. Well, I don't trust it, all right? Put the flag on things so you trust it. Well, I don't trust it. Tour guides said that one of the reasons they wanted to build the data center in Utah was because of the patriotism of uh, people from Utah. Yeah, that was one of my questions is, uh, you know, why, why did you come here? And his response was, the electricity is cheap and the people are patriotic. And I, I read that as a code word is that nobody's going to ask any questions. And, you know, that, that kind of sat with me uneasily that it, in my opinion, uh, patriotism is questioning your government uh, consistently. The idea that we're just sheep out here and we're not going to care, I think is, y you know, even though we're a very conservative state, I think a lot of people would bristle at that idea. Put the flag on things so you trust it. Well, I don't trust it. You may sign up to speak. You may, please leave. Please leave the room. Thank you. Please leave. Shame on you. Tempers seem to flare at the county school board meeting. This as board members heard from the public about putting up a cell tower on the grounds of Shadyside Elementary School. You are the deciders. The process started here. The process tracks here. The process ends here. Those opposed to the cell tower, some of them parents, say they have long-term health concerns. They were counting on the board to take action by casting a vote even though it was only a review item. As board members, please protect our children. We absolutely need you today to be brave. Even as both sides lined up to be heard, it was evident there was still plenty of frustration. That's when the board had to call in security. It's time for you to leave. Thank you, I will, thank you. There was public support for the Shadyside cell tower from residents who tried to convince the board of the benefits. With the current storms brewing in the Atlantic this week, I think about safety. Will my cell phone work if I call for help? I think about safety. Will my cell phone work if I call for help or try to let my family know that I'm okay? Please do not let the financial agenda of these small few in our community bully this board into backing out of this plan. One board member called for a vote on the issue, even though he realized the item was only up for review. Motion fails at this time. That said, the cell tower proposal, now out of the hands of the school board, awaits an official permit. Now looking beyond Shadyside, there are two other pending cell phone tower proposals, one of them on the grounds of school board headquarters. So what's the financial benefit? Last year, the school system collected a little more than $81,000. Live in the studio, Tim Tootin, WBAL, TV 11 News. Of all the places in Shadyside, why are you trying to put a cell phone tower in my kid's playground? Yeah. 
There's like a thousand other places you can put a cell phone tower. This is the this is ground zero for the best possible opportunity to create. I understand, this is not our one but the point I'm making is this: You're asking why I can't go somewhere else, right? You're asking why can't I go like a mile away or two miles away? Yeah, you're just, you're just saying, like, the answer is this is the best place to fill the hole in the network. You're asking, why can't I go like a mile away or two miles yeah, away? Yeah, you're just, you're just saying, like, the answer is, like, this is the best place to fill the hole in the network. Really? There's really, there's really everywhere else in Shadyside. You're trying to tell me. Everywhere else in Shadyside, you can't get more than 200 feet from a building or somebody's property line or whatever. That's what you're trying to tell me? And will you be guaranteed, will we be guaranteed that the school is, that is, the cell tower is safe for us kids? And we won't get any some some sort of cancer or anything like that. Because I don't want cancer. Can I, can I ask what grade you're in? What? What grade are you in? Fifth. You're in fifth grade. Yeah. Okay. Going into fifth. When my son was nine years old in the third grade, he was diagnosed with leukemia. He went to a school where there was a cell tower within three or four hundred feet from his elementary school, at Forest Hill Elementary School in Fairfax County. So, if there's anyone who can understand your concern, it's me. Because I'm a, I'm a parent of a child who had cancer and survived cancer. And, and, and I, can tell you, I can tell you that there, there is no credible evidence to demonstrate that my son got cancer from that cell tower. that there, there is no credible evidence to demonstrate that my son got cancer from that cell tower. Because, because the reality is that there's no evidence to show that that's harm. And I wouldn't be able to do this for a And And I can tell you, I can tell you that there, there is no credible evidence to demonstrate that my son got cancer from that cell tower. Because, because the reality is that there's no evidence to show that God is harm. And I wouldn't have been able to do this for a in cell tower will go up in Appleton. A judge ruled in favor of the company last week, but the city of Appleton and nearby neighbors are not happy with that decision. Fox 11's Alexis Santos has this Fox 11 follow-up. It just doesn't belong there. Neighbors near a proposed Verizon cell tower in Appleton are disappointed with a judge's decision to allow the company to build. At the end of the day, nobody should be allowed to build a cell tower that close to uh, a residential area. The city of Appleton tried to stop it. The Common Council denied the permit for constructing the tower because of concerns from neighbors about safety and loss of property values. They came forward and they really laid out their case. It was a pretty powerful case. Mm -hmm. So um, council said, no, see what happens. We'll take our chances. In August, Verizon sued the city of Appleton over that decision. Out of Gamey County Judge Nancy Krieger ruled in favor of Verizon's claim that Appleton didn't provide enough evidence to support that permit denial, and those grounds are not valid for denying a permit. We're definitely pleased with the outcome, and and for us it really comes down to to public safety. For um, and and for us it really comes down to to public safety. And and, and I can tell you, I can tell you that there, there is no credible evidence to demonstrate that my son got cancer from that cell tower. Because, because the reality is that there's no evidence to show that God is harm. And I wouldn't have been able to do this for and, and for us, it really comes down to, to public safety. Verizon says it wanted to fill in gaps in coverage in the Appleton area and also make sure people could use their phones in case of an emergency. I think about safety. Will my cell phone work if I call for help or try to let my family know that I'm okay? 
People living near St. Joseph's Church on Green Bay's south side are voicing their concerns, protesting this morning against a cell phone tower that will be built on church grounds. Protesters of this tower say there are several reasons they do not want the tower to be built there, including what they say are health risks, lowering the value of their property and messing with televisions and radios on their homes. A staff member of the Quad Parishes told us some of the reasons the church agreed to having the cell phone tower on its property including financial benefits. Um, provide better cell phone coverage. And nowadays everybody has a cell phone. So that's one of the main things. It will be an evangelization tool for us. It's going to be a clock tower and it will have our church name on all four sides. Um, a cross on the top lit up so that people will know that there's a church here. It's a terrible location to put up a 140 foot tall cell phone tower. Willoughby Hills residents like Dan Valerian say they were stunned to learn their mayor approved a massive cell tower to be built here at this location on River Road without them even knowing it. A location residents say is all wrong. The beauty of the Chagrin Valley on one side, residential areas all around you, a historic cemetery, a historic building and you're just going to wedge this thing right in the middle of all that. And some Willoughby Hills Council members say the mayor broke the law by approving the project. And to find out that the mayor had signed it months before the first meeting was held, I think that's just wrong. And frankly, at our December meeting, we asked the mayor not once but twice, did you sign any agreement with Verizon or the representatives? He said no both times. Did you sign this lease without consulting residents? Yes, I did. Did you sign this lease without consulting residents? Yes, I did. Mayor Robert Weger admitted he approved the project without talking to residents, but told me city council was in on the deal, a deal that could have Willoughby Hills facing a lawsuit if it doesn't follow through. It's got to go through two readings at the uh, planning commission, and that hasn't happened yet. Reporting here in Willoughby Hills, I'm News 5 investigator Joe Paganakis. Residents in one of El Paso's oldest neighborhoods are speaking out against a proposed cell phone tower. KFOX 14 News at 9's Megan Lopez attended a Sunset Heights community meeting tonight to find out why they're so opposed to it. She joins us live in the studio to explain why residents say they don't want the tower. Megan. Robert, people who live in the Sunset Heights Historic District say the 60-foot tall tower will be an eyesore. They say it doesn't belong in their community. The president of the Sunset Heights Neighborhood Improvement Association, Cito Negron, says the tower and the city is currently considering whether it wants to, uh, it wants to let Crown Castle build that tower for Verizon Wireless. These are some artistic renderings of what that tower could look like. Negron says that the company offered designs that would look like a Bhutanese structure to disguise the tower so it would resemble a UTEP design. But some of the residents I spoke with tonight say that's not enough. Now they talked about disguising it to look like a UTEP tower, you know? But this is not UTEP. This is Sunset Heights. If they want to put that over there by UTEP, you know, that's their decision. It's not consistent with the uh, integrity of the historic nature of the neighborhood. It might not be to the benefit of anybody but the cell carrier and the property owner. Um, it's definitely not to the benefit of the neighborhood. Aside from being an eyesore, Negron tells me that the company has to get special permission to build that tower in that area because it's so close to some houses. Tonight, Sunset Heights residents met at Hal Marcus Gallery to discuss their options. Some have sent letters to the city's planning commission to ask for another area to be chosen for that tower. The city's planning commission is set to hear the cell phone tower proposal tomorrow afternoon. Reporting live, Megan Lopez, KFOX 14 News. At Every new generation of wireless networks delivers faster speeds and more functionality to our smartphones. 1G brought us the very first cell phones, 2G let us text for the first time, 3G brought us online, and 4G delivered the speeds that we enjoy today. But as more users come online, 4G networks have just about reached the limit of what they're capable of at a time when users want even more data for their smartphones and devices. Now we're headed toward 5G, the next generation of wireless. It will be able to handle a thousand times more traffic than today's networks, and it'll be up to 10 times faster than 4G LTE. Just imagine downloading an HD movie in under a second, and then let your imagination run wild. Five G will be the foundation for virtual reality, autonomous driving, the Internet of Things, and stuff we can't even yet imagine.
But what exactly is a 5G network? The truth is, experts can't tell us what 5G actually is because they don't even know yet. Your smartphone and other electronic devices in your home use very specific frequencies on the radio frequency spectrum, typically those under 6 gigahertz. But these frequencies are starting to get more crowded. Carriers can only squeeze so many bits of data on the same amount of radio frequency spectrum. As more devices come online, we're going to start to see slower service and more dropped connections. The solution is to open up some new real estate. So researchers are experimenting with broadcasting on shorter millimeter waves, those that fall between 30 and 300 gigahertz. This section of spectrum has never been used before for mobile devices, and opening it up means more bandwidth for everyone. But there is a catch. Millimeter waves can't travel well through buildings or other obstacles, and they tend to be absorbed by plants and rain. To get around this problem, we'll need technology number two, small cell networks. Today's wireless networks rely on large, high-powered cell towers to broadcast their signals over long distances. But remember, higher frequency millimeter waves have a harder time traveling through obstacles, which means if you move behind one, you lose your signal. Small cell networks would solve that problem, using thousands of low-power mini base stations. These base stations would be much closer together than traditional towers, forming a sort of relay team to transmit signals around obstacles. We know people are already getting sick from the lower frequencies, and we expect, that is our scientists expect, that these higher, ultra-high frequency uh, microwaves are going to bring people to disease quicker and in a more intense form. The other problem with 5G technology is these microwaves are very short, so our old microwaves were about two and a half to three feet long. These are now about an inch to half an inch long and they don't travel very well. So they're gonna to have to put a little cell tower transmitter in front of about every two to 10 homes. Now this is a big problem because we know that cancer rates around regular cell towers are about three or four times what they normally should be. We also know that there's neurological symptoms that increase as you get closer and closer to a cell tower. Now these new transmitters are gonna be placed close to people's homes um, it's going to be continuous exposure as with other cell towers, but it'll be emitting a much more higher frequency, high intensity wireless radiation. From uh, documents dating back into the early 80s, we see that the military had discussed uh, the possibilities of mind control through uh, radio frequency energy. Uh, the possibility is there. The military has studied it. A 1982 Air Force report called radio frequency energy a major new research initiative and said that RF can, quote, disrupt normal purposeful behavior. A 1987 military report called for more research on RF energy as a non-lethal weapon while pointing out that most of the existing technology is classified. And sure enough, in 1993, there was a big conference at John Hopkins University. Here, the entire conference was classified. But the agenda wasn't, and weapons using extremely low radio frequencies, or ELFs, were listed as a very attractive option. This document from Maxwell Air Force Base lays out um, the use of electromagnetic weapons technologies for debilitating human beings. Using electromagnetic warfare against human beings, you can cause disease, you can cause hysteria, or you can cause passivity for population control. Extremely low frequencies affect us because they are the same frequencies that our brains output. And when they're in the environment around us, our brains try to entrain to them. So our brains try to mimic those signals. And if those signals are not uh, good ones for our behavior, then we can fall apart. We can behave differently. We could get sick. We could feel very stressed and not we know could ever why. learn how to electronically stroke the, the ionosphere, this layer that begins about 30 miles above the Earth's surface that's electrically charged. If we could ever figure out how to electronically stroke it, he said, to get it to send a signal back to the Earth, we could affect uh, the behavior of people over huge geographic areas on a hemispheric basis. And it wouldn't affect everyone. It would affect 70 or 80 percent of the population is what they more or less figured. But this was a technology that didn't exist in 1969. Suppose you generate a field that produces fear, fundamental fear, in large numbers of people. And then over the television, more traditional ways, you say, 
the reason we're having this fear is because of this particular group. And now you start to move the population believing in a direction that you wish. To influence 250 million people, the equivalent of the entire population of the United States, may not be that difficult. According to Dr. Persinger, we already have the technology. Well, it's a never-ending battle, preserving history as growth swallows it up. People living in historic Raleigh neighborhoods are worried about cell phone towers going up in their area. Um, and, and for us, it really comes down to, to public safety. And, and, and I can tell you, I can tell you that there, there is no credible evidence to demonstrate that my son got cancer from that cell tower. Because, because the reality is that there's no evidence to show that God is harmed. And I wouldn't be able to do that.